All right, we have an update to a story we have been following concerning a missing Maryland woman. Police still searching for the 59-year-old teacher who was last seen walking on a trail in the D.C. metro area nearly two weeks ago at this point. Maryland police giving an update earlier this morning. We conducted an extensive search of the park area where she was last reported to be seen, which is Shroudhouse Park. Uh, we searched that area extensively on Tuesday, uh, utilizing those canine teams and search managers from Maryland State Police. Uh, and we did not locate her, but that area has been thoroughly searched. Uh, and at this point, we don't believe that she is anywhere in that vicinity of either Shroudhouse Park or where her residence was. All right, so police using dogs to try to search for her. We heard right there they have not found her. But in the meantime, let's take a look at this picture. Maryland police, Maryland police also investigating the death of this woman. She had also been reported missing while hiking along a trail, but this trail about 50 miles north of where the other woman went missing. But in this case, Rachel Morin's body was found the day after she went missing. The 37-year-old's death is being investigated as a homicide, although no suspects have been named. Her new boyfriend has taken to social media saying he has nothing to do with it. So let's bring in News Nation Law and Justice contributor Jennifer Koffendoffer. Jennifer, a lot to dig into with this. Thank you so much for giving us some of your time. First of all, we know both women disappeared uh, while walking alone on trails in the D.C. metro. One of them has now been confirmed dead. These trails, as we said, are about an hour from each other. But does that raise any red flags for you? No red flags in this situation. I believe uh, the young woman that was uh, sadly found deceased, uh, that's a targeted attack, I believe. And uh, I think police are working to develop uh, information concerning uh, possible suspects. Uh, clearly, uh, that seems like a targeted situation. All right, so there, there are obvious similarities here, but, you know, plenty of differences, uh, as, as you alluded to there. We know one woman, you know, this Miriam uh, Sila, she was uh, in her late 50s, the other in her late 30s. One is black, one is white, but both apparently walking alone. I mean, is that a, at least enough to consider taking a closer look, or is this just a case of both women getting the attention they deserve as human beings, and we shouldn't necessarily be looking for connections in these cases? Well, I think, Nicole, the distance between the individuals, and there were some very odd and concerning circumstances circumstances regarding the first woman that was found in terms of when she was reported missing, in terms of when she was uh, uh, left and went on that trail. So there's some uh, very concerning indicators. But, Nicole, I think you bring up such a great point because the one thing that really concerns me uh, in this particular case is that the woman was a woman of habit, Nicole. She liked to go on this trail. She was a very religious woman. Uh, she liked to hike and pray at the same time on this trail. And unfortunately, when people are people uh, of habit and do the same things, they become very vulnerable uh, to being victimized, not only by the people they do know, but also by people they don't know. You know, and Jennifer, at what point in an investigation, in dual investigations, does coincidental evidence start to potentially play a bigger role? Well, it can, but in this case, it's so different, I believe. Uh, in this case, we have a woman who, unfortunately, there's been no cell operation, there's been no social media, uh, uh, there's been no financial records. So we know clearly there is something seriously wrong and there's really only three possibilities. One, she purposefully is not communicating, not using her finances, not using her social media. Second to that, it could be some sort of horrible health crisis and she hasn't been found. I find that very uh, unlikely based on the search efforts. And then of course, the other possibility is uh, some sort of foul play that she's been abducted and hurt in some way, keeping her from her devices. So uh, sadly, uh, certainly cause for concern in her case. Yeah, and we're glad, you know, authorities, we know that the people in her community are are, are searching for her. They have not forgotten about her. I want to switch uh, to the other case now, this, this Rachel Morin. We know police have launched mm -hmm. a homicide investigation when it comes to this case. Uh, we know her boyfriend, they, they were a new couple. He has some criminal background, but he's got on social media media saying, hey, you know, I do have a criminal background, but I've been clean for X number of months. I don't have anything to do with this. Uh, what is likely happening right now in 
this homicide, this now homicide investigation of a 37-year-old mother uh, who was found dead on a hiking trail. Well, the good news is, Nicole, law enforcement has some particular time markers to work with in terms of when she left to go on this trail and also uh, when she was reported missing. So they're going to be working on filling in the digital forensic evidence from cell phones uh, and also from possible cameras, from witnesses as to what happened in that rather large gap. And I think that uh, clearly the domestic violence record of her boyfriend will come into play. They're certainly going to be looking closely at his whereabouts and what he was doing in this time frame as well. Well, we certainly hope uh, that both families uh, get some justice here. Uh, and we certainly hope the missing teacher is ultimately found safe. Jennifer Koffendoffer, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.